Hello, and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Nolan Carney. All right, Nolan, it's Skate America Week. Like, it's upon us. I feel excited that the Grand Prix is actually here. Yeah, like, I'm so... It honestly just feels like it came out of nowhere. Like, it felt like three weeks ago we were watching the Junior Grand Prix, like, chatting about Nebelhorn, and now, like, we're about to embark on the Grand Prix season. We have pretty much skating till Christmas from now on, so... It's it's always a weird thing, although I'm ex- I'm excited, cautiously excited because it's already started out in messy fashion. I mean, a U.S. dance team was replaced the day that they were supposed to leave for the competition, and there was a word that Justin Dillon was actually monitoring the team yesterday. So no, and of course in in modern U.S. figure skating fashion, no updates on why yeah. the team was withdrawn so speculation abound uh but that's par for the course with u.s figure skating and um more of the hot mess also last week uh it came out that tracy merrick is no longer the ceo of u.s figure skating it was a bit of a terse statement and uh deliberately vague lots of rumors have been flying around about that over the last several weeks that this was coming uh whether it was uh, by her decision or their decision, or you know, there was a, a meeting of the minds that this was going to happen. So lots of things swirling. I don't think it's great news for US figure skating, like right no. before skating. I think you, you got a lot of negative coming out in the press, especially if you're looking on Twitter. I mm-hmm. mean, you I woke up this morning and if you go read tweet, go on like any of the skating main skating Twitters, you see the post about them, um, the quote retweets. I mean, they are not positive about U.S. figure skating in any Is it about any Bella capacity. Flores? Not- about Bella Flores. And then there was stuff about the president too. Um, a lot of people kind of speculating that, you know, like um, like good for her that she's leaving or we don't know if she left or was forced to leave. But, you know, just a lot of negative, um, accu- negative accusations going against U.S. figure skating, which honestly, if you look at, their track record, I probably deserved for some of the mm-hmm. some of the things. And they had Mia Callen a couple of weeks ago too, who got pulled. You know, a lot of people felt that was unjust, um, even though it made more sense to send the girl. I think they're just they're making decision, they're making bold decisions that I think aren't agreeing with the public. And some of them might be paying off and some of them aren't. So there's been a lot of talk about finances in US figure skating for a long time. Uh, and it's very unclear where money is going and why money is missing. Uh, they have not really built the sport, although there are, you know, Synchro is doing well, the Tilt program, there are certain things that are considered money makers. Uh, they have an Excel program. They haven't really consolidated events, uh, but there's been a lot of talk about budgets and meetings, and there was something in the budget where there was like $4 million of miscellaneous at one point that wasn't really explained. Um, but there was a couple other things, uh, coaches, and I'm sure that they will, uh, put in the comments, have some grievances about, uh, things that happened when the PSA was dissolved and the USFS really kind of absorbed that function. Uh, there was a lot of issues in getting liability insurance, uh, over the summer and it was, uh, you know, very last minute. So I know that there were a lot of bad feelings about that. And that it costs more and more to be a coach and uh, people aren't really sure what they are getting uh, in return. Also, to be a PSA rated coach was a huge uh, investment of time and money. And what does that really mean at this point? It's it's rather unclear. So it's a lot of things are changing. Um, There's also been... uh, the issue of paying for uh, skaters to go to competition because of a cash crunch. Certain skaters actually pay their own way to go to some more minor competitions. Uh, Not as many coaches can go to some competitions. They try to send teams with the same coach. It's just a lot of things that are happening um, that aren't really great news. Um, And it's unclear how much of this is related to legal fees and other matters that have changed um, regarding safe sport cases uh, and things of that nature. So a lot of uh, concern. I also got a message from someone a couple weeks ago that they had received a call asking them if they wanted to purchase tickets to Skate America. 
Um, doesn't seem like the sales are really great. I don't know about you, but I kind of think events are going to wind up being at the Skating Club of Boston and in Colorado, like pretty standard at some point in time. Uh, I don't know that the moving around from to city to city to Wichita is really going to um, pay off for U.S. figure skating. So I would think. Yeah, I think um, I think honestly, like Skate America, if you rank the three U.S. competitions that they have each year, you know, world or, or this year that we're having world's. Mm -hmm. um nationals and skate america i think skate america is normally less attended than nationals or worlds yeah. are i mean last year nationals was cleveland did was it columbus columbus sorry columbus really nailed it out of the park did a great job getting people in um and i think the same will happen this year with um wichita and um worlds i think more people are probably saving up economically to go to worlds um and i think it just skate america is not really in I don't really think it's in an area that people it's a, not really a skating um, state or just not. I don't really think it's an area conducive to bring in people to come watch an ice sport, but that's, they, that's my take. So, so they, they have the event um, in Texas because they have an ice dance event in the same venue over the summer. So the organizing committee is, um, you know, used to putting on events. They do have a base to draw from, but you know, the, the, it's, it's hard because all of skating is also down a couple of stars, right? Japan really hasn't replenished like the names that they had before, even though they still have medalists. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, without Russia, that's another like three people per discipline that could be a potential draw. And I don't know about you, but if I'm going to spend money to go to an event, it's kind of based on who's going, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I want to go for the skating, but even when I look at like the Skate America roster, I'm like, oh, who's competing? It's not that good this year. Dance is good. Yeah, I, you know what's one I am actually optimistically ready for? I think the pair event is going to be very good. I think the pair event is going to be interesting because there are three US teams that are- Very, so sad, very average with each yeah. other. I think that that event, um, if we you know, just talk about that, uh, going to th that field, you know, we have Danny and Ellie, we have who obviously on paper would be uh, the favorites. They did well at Nebelhorn uh, in the short program. You know, their jumps are hit or miss, right? Mm -hmm. So I think anything could happen there. Uh, Katie McBeath and Daniel, uh, Danielle Parkman, they showed uh, promise last season. We haven't really seen much of them this season. And then Elisa Efimova and uh, Misha Mitrofanov were pretty decent at Nebelhorn. So I think that that could be an interesting matchup kind of between those teams. Then you add in uh, Riku and Ricci. Obviously, they're always strong. Uh, you know, Maria Pavlova and Alexei uh, Svitachenko from Hungary. Sorry, this is so... Names are so Russian, but you know they are Russian. The Hushins, so. uh, th you know, they're a solid team. That's can I would think that they would definitely challenge Ellie and Danny and probably beat them, uh, even yep. though it's in the U.S. But you know, things could happen. Uh, a Georgian team is going to be competing, and there's a Finnish team. That's like a pretty, you know what? It's going to be and... the best of times or the worst of times. Yeah. They will either all do well or all bomb in dramatic fashion and i could see it going either way and i have to say even the british team that they're sending this year they beat leah and trent at nebelhorn and i think they were second behind the italians at the um the tayside trophy this weekend so even, even them like being at the lower part of the standings are still going to put up formidable performances so it's very i I'm, it's a very i have an optimistic um attitude for this event so I'm really excited to see Wakaba Higuchi. Okay. I have this, like, she tends to peak in the Olympic season, 2018, 2022. Yeah. And listen, I don't trust my girl to, like, nail it every time. Yeah. But, you know, I'm still emotionally at her Lion King program. This year's program's you know, not as impactful, but I think, you know, we're building to next year. Remember when she skated to Sia? at the worlds and yes. it was this moment. So like every four years, she and Shaylin come up with something that is just really uh, tugs at your heartstrings. I think, you know, we're building, we're getting back into form. I don't know about the triple axel this season, but 
I at least am excited to see her back out there and in the mix and showing the Japanese Federation that she means business. So I think this is another stepping stone for her. I'm not expecting a medal. Um, I fully expect to get my heart broken, but she doesn't need to be good until next year. Yeah, I think she just needs to keep herself in the mix. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can do, I think, for a certain point is you you don't have to go out there and be perfect every time. As long as you're putting up like um, admirable, admirable performances over the past the next year and a half, if mm -hmm. you nail at that Japanese nationals, like you can make that you can make that Olympic team. You know, it's really it's about peaking at the right time. And for her, I think she really has that down pat. Yeah. I'm interested to see Rinka Watanabe because that has gone both ways in recent years where she's been super strong and also less strong. Curious how that will go. Um, Yuna Aoki is also going to be competing. So a little mini competition within the Japanese team. I'm hoping that Wakaba is not on the losing end of that. Uh, always <laughs> nerve wracking. There's always the feeling that Wakaba is not Japan's yeah. favorite skater. She wasn't at uh, their team camp over the summer. So she's definitely on the outside working her way back in. Uh, so I am, you know, concerned. Uh, Nina uh, Pinzeroni is going to be there. Olga Makutina, uh, Leah Serna, and from the U.S., Elise Lynn Garcia, Isabel Levito, and Brady Tunnell. I mean, there's going to be a lot of cheetah jumps, all right? <laughs> We're going to see some carrots everywhere. Kim uh, Minche uh, from South Korea, uh, Livia Kaiser from Switzerland. A lot of cheetah jumps. But yeah. Hopefully, I think the competition within the U.S. is also going to be interesting because Elise has had several wins over Isabeau, but Isabeau's a big-time skater where she rises to yeah. the region. If you had to pick one of the three, which one do you have on top of the three? Well, uh, you know... If you had to put your money on it right now, who are you betting on? <sighs> Isabeau has nine lives. Right. Yes. And I think the bottom falls out eventually when someone has nine lives and it looks like they're always on the edge. I think we're on like life number five right now. All right. And I I think Isabel's going to pull it out. I do too. She's the reigning world silver medalist. She's determined. And she's just lost. She's got her. Yeah, language. she's lost twice. Twice. I think she's going to come out to show for Skate America. This is the Grand Prix. And um, Elise Lynn Gracie is, you know, a great up and coming skater. And Elise might be a little tired, right? Like at this point, Elise has had two big wins. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's natural to have a little dip. Like you can't be up all the time. And There's going to be for more. Her, for her to, if she's on a dip right now, that's not really great for her trajectory because she has back-to-back -back Grand Prix. She'll be at Skate Canada um, next weekend too. So I think she might, maybe she's in like high crunch mode these next two weeks and then we'll take the dip in the middle of the fall. But um, I wouldn't, I don't know. I think Brady will do better than she did at the last competition. I, yeah. I was away, I didn't see her practice, but she missed her best combination uh, in the free where, I mean, Brady's money element is her triple loop double axle. When you see it in person, it's really huge. And she kind of over-rotated, stepped out of the triple loop uh, in Shanghai and then skipped the double axle. I wouldn't expect her to make that mistake twice. Uh, her edge jumps are her better jumps. So I I think she's going to do better. I, I would... see her in like between like, I would say between second and sixth. Is where I, I would project go, her to be, be in. I was going to say third to fifth, but I could see an unexpected second. But I, I would yeah. think fifth with a building happening. Yeah. Uh, like, I think we're going to see. It's very interesting how she's trained to keep her body healthy. even It's during... very smart. Very smart training. So I, I don't know. She just seems, when I saw her last skate, I thought she's even... I... Right. Yeah, I think she has an organized, sorry, Ugh. I think she has a very organized training in terms of making sure she's keeping her body in check, keeping her health as a priority and also making strides. I mean, last year we saw her do, you know, triple let's double toe in the short program. This year we're trying the cheated let's toe standing up in a good fashion. So it, it looks presentable. So I think she's making small, um, 
small additions throughout the program that are going to benefit her in the long run. You know, she does a lot of drills for the height of that lots to make sure mm -hmm. that she gets, uh, and for the height of the toe. So, you know, I think it's a work in progress, uh, trying to break old habits, but um, we'll see. The men's event, I mean, Kevin Amos is supposed to compete there. He's had some good things in practice over the last weeks, but we saw the last competition was absolutely, um, you know, absolutely uh, anything could happen, right? I, I, um, I might have put him in last in my fantasy. Oh, okay. I mean, I think anything is possible with someone yeah. that driven by emotion. And he's obviously extremely talented. I think this could go a number of ways. And I think I could definitely see a situation where it's a repeat performance. I could also see a situation where he pulls something out and then fans go, see, like he was fine. And then mm -hmm. it continues. So I think in short spurts, someone that is so up and down can pull something out, but not consistently. So yeah. I'm interested to see where this goes um because that performance that he had is it's not like it came out of nowhere right there's been no. a number of times so we'll have to see how i would think it would be really important we'll know by how much he does in the practice when kevin is feeling really anxious he pulls back in the practice and kind of avoids jumping in public uh at europeans he did that so if he's practicing his program, he'll be pretty good. If he doesn't, buckle up, <laughs> right? You That's can tune the... in tomorrow at 11, or I think it'll be 12 p.m. Eastern mm. on Peacock to watch all the practices. So you know we will be tuned in. And Sylvia is supposed to go with him to the competition, so we're going to have that mess, right? That'll There's... be an entertaining story. Right, I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Wesley Chu uh, from Canada, Nika Agadze, so we'll be seeing Ateri, Kalmira, uh, Kushiro Shimada, uh, Nozomu uh, Yoshioka, uh, Dennis Vasiliev, uh, Donovan Carrillo, Luca Brassard, uh, Ilya Malinin, and Maxim Naumov. I think it's a big opportunity for Luca Brassard to totally. place ahead of Naumov. If he... And I, I think he can do that very, very easily. Mm -hmm. um, now Umov went, uh, was, uh, was he, I think he was at Neville Horn too. And I don't believe he broke 200. I mean, that was a very abysmal performance from him there, but now Umov is that type of skater. Um, and Jenny said this too. He he's very, one that kind of pushes more towards the end of the year, kind of comes together around nationals, kind of the same, same thing with Torgashev, Camden Polkinen, um, mm -hmm. all of those three boys, I kind of line them up together, like the same skater in my opinion to me, but they're middling. If, yeah. If I would add Jimmy Ma. I would yeah. add Loki. Right. Yeah. There's been a, a cluster of middling, and we've kind of picked which one is gonna be the savior at any point. Yeah. But they've been a pack for a while. And um I think Luca has the opportunity as long as he doesn't get too anxious about this being his first really big event. I, I think he could do it. Um, He's got the potential. And I think if he can stray along very consistent performances he will be a shoe in in my opinion for worlds i now, think he yeah he needs to try to push for the podium here i think it's possible yeah uh, he would be kind of competing with dennis vasilia if he does well yeah um i think he could beat kashiro um as long as he does well i mean he'd be going up against kevin but i think luca definitely should aim for the top five uh yes it's possible to be higher yeah, Naumov does usually do well at nationals, um, but I don't think that that strategy is going to work anymore, especially if Luca is more in the mix. Yeah. Um, you know, Luca is a, a good option for a number three uh, for mm -hmm. the USFS, at least by next year. And I think that this strategy that Naumov and Torgashev have had of really uh, peaking towards nationals is not enough to establish a body of work. And typically we have seen that skaters that don't do as well on the Grand Prix, their marks are lower at nationals because they should yeah. be able to trust you. Now, I have a question for you. Yes. Do you think that we're going to see in in the, in the kiss and cry for Nika Gatsa, do you think Ateri is going to be sporting her new diamond ring? 
Like, is she going to be showing, is Diana Davis going to be showing it off in her performance? What do you think? What? I can only hope that someone wants to gets down on one knee for me with one of those. With rings. the Atari, which, which collection do you want? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I, I can, it would be great marketing, right? To do it. Did Don't you even... love when you woke up and saw that that was her first post? I is that it... she's a ring collection now? I thought it was a fever dream. <laughs> I, I, I just... <laughs> We can only hope that we see it in person this weekend. I I hope. I remember when um, we were at uh, Skate America in Vegas and she had on like the big cross and she was like petting this dog from afar. It was so surreal. Just, it was the first time I had seen her in person. It was, it was just such a moment. She has a real aura. The of course, way of course she does. She has the typical um, eyes of like um, a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> my opinion, allegedly. Um, I picked this up. Where you, yeah. Okay. Did you ever hear about when Biden met Putin and he told him that I look into your eyes and you have no soul? It's like that. Wait, Biden said that to Putin or Putin said that yeah. to Biden? No, Biden said that to Putin and then Putin <laughs> said we understand each other. Um, <laughs> I was just reading one of his book last night. It's like a Terry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has those okay. eyes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. I feel like I haven't seen her in person yet, so I won't know. You know, you know it's like once you can recognize like what those eyes look like. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like a black hole, of just yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't. You either see it or you don't see it. It's it's like um. It's like uh, there were posts about JD Vance as well. Like okay. that there are certain people that just have certain auras about them. Okay. Are, yeah. So. <laughs> just, just, you know. Speaking of a Terry. You know, you love Twitter. I'm really interested to see how Diana and Gleb do because yeah. he was really injured uh, in Kazakhstan and covered in KT tape. So, you know, the kind of injury he had... Um, can take a little time to heal, you know, if it, if there is something with his abs or, you know, broad, that region is uh, painful. So I, yeah. I and it's I hard because I want to do my fantasy and I want to put them third, but they haven't competed all season. And with the injury, like, I don't know who to pick who, where I'm picking to put these people. You can put them any which way, I right? Know. They are what I am. So I would, <laughs> I would keep, I'm keeping them up. I'm definitely keeping them up there, but yeah. Um... <laughs> Like I don't, I wouldn't go thinking that they're gonna like lose to Lisa and Alexei. No, know, from no. Israel, just yeah, yeah. Like they will be uh, in the top five, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm yeah. really interested to see how the Lila Fear free dance continues to evolve yeah. because it, I feel like it was such a miss the first two times, mm -hmm. and I I do see the idea for them, but I just I still am interested to see how it pans out because i think as of now they're looking i think they're going to be dropped down a peg i think they might get overtaken by le joie and le Gars if they keep this program and it, it doesn't pan out the way that they want it to it doesn't create that overarching like fierce pop icon mo uh, moment that they're looking for so i actually thought that the rocky program never fully came together at worlds okay. uh and a lot of it was the section in the choreo section when they were doing side-by-side -side lunges and stuff. She was always half a beat behind him the whole season. And I noticed similar choreography in this program and I'm scared for it. Yeah. Because there's parts, it's weird. This program could be really effective, but they need to take their skating to another level. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't think they have the time to get there by the Olympic year. I don't know. Again, Unless they're pushing for 2030. I think they're pushing for 2030, but. I think that they, I mean, with how bad the Italians program is this year, anything is possible. Yes. But I think Lajoie and Laga have more substance. And we haven't but even I, seen them. In general, if going by war, yeah. right? Yeah. I think 100%. that they have more potential substance. I think that, um, it's it's really uh, it's going to be an interesting rivalry between the two of them in the coming years. 
uh, because Fear and Gibson obviously have a lot more charisma and star power uh, than the other team, but they need to up their skating level to really solidify that spot. Uh, and there's certainly people that you know criticize their programs maybe they don't cover as much ice as the other teams the unison could be better um so yeah i i i'm looking for a good performance for them i expect them to be second here mm -hmm. uh, but anything is possible um leah Nesset and artem markalov are competing here they're now married um congratulations she's 18 um yeah uh interesting um they're a great team madison chalk and evan bates they took a lot of time off this summer so i'll be curious to see how polished they are uh compared to previous years um because last year they were amazing at skate america the year before they were amazingly not uh, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and obviously they're supposed to win here but they had a rough, it was tough to give them that win over Hawaii and Baker um, mm -hmm. two years ago. Yeah, I, I don't know. They still, I, I think they should be first for your fantasy. I, I would do that. Oh, oh, Madison Chalk and Evan Bates? Yes. Of course. They're penned in. They're sharpied in, Dave. Sharpied in. Okay. Sharpied in. What about Olivia Smart and Tim Deke? Okay, she got her hair done on Instagram today. So that gave me a reassurance that we're going to be okay for Skate America. Because as... I do that too, by the way. You do what too? Like when I was dating someone long distance or if I'm going to a competition, like I get my hair done before I go. It, it just reassures you a little bit. You know, like yes. Jenny Kirk said that if you got your roots done, like you skate well. I think about it all the time. <laughs> it was very true. I do, right? Mm -hmm. It's that last. That final yeah. touch. Yeah. You're ready to present yourself in a very great way. You feel that your training has been going well. You're ready and to I go get my eyebrows. Task. I get my eyebrows done as well. It, it, I feel like she got hers done too. I wouldn't be surprised. Olivia Smart is very put together. You got to give yourself every reason to feel confident. Yeah, 100%. And she's going to go out there and give us the Dune performance of her life. All right. Like we are going to be on, taken on a journey with her. So that lunge move that they missed, they've missed that before. Yeah. So, so I'm curious to see if the, the choreography is the same or if we've altered it. We need to do like a side-by-side -side comparison, like after this event to see okay, what you think happens. It's really good or really bad for them? This do week? I think they'll, I think they're going to skate very well. I think, uh, here's the thing. I don't think they'll be, I think they'll be like sixth place, but that's because they're not good. They don't have, they, they don't have the political push and they're a newer team still like a second year. So you know how I stance work. So it takes years for you to move really up. diplomatic about this. You know how I stance works. It takes years for you to push up. I love Olivia. All right. I would never we all do. my girl. Yes. How about Moraskova and Moracic? Um I don't, they, they, they have interesting programs. I don't know where they fit in the mix. Uh, Laureate and Lagak, you know, they've been, and, you know, Fabri and Air, they won the rhythm dance in Kazakhstan, but then third in the free dance. Over, I, I am interested to see, it's an I am mess, really. There's yes, like yeah. It's like the I am, it's like the I am Hunger Games. And like, you get to, this is how you find your ranking this year. This is like, it's like that for, you know, that when you get your midterm, and you see like where you are, like in the mm -hmm. class, I feel like that's it. And we're going to see like where everyone is and we're going to, you make your pushes after that. You know, we need to have a ranking of where everyone is at before we move forward with the season. I've always been curious, like Lisa and Alexei Jr. Uh, from Israel had a lot of success at juniors, but they're not <laughs> coached by Galit Chait. And, um, you know, traditionally um, that's been a key to success um, by you know, a figure skater. I mean, I just look back to um, when Isabella Tobias's partner um, suddenly didn't get citizenship for the Olympic year when they chose not to be coached by Galit. So it was just I like see, a weird coincidence. I see them finishing last. Well, I think I think that if they trained in Montclair, that they would be on the Olympic team for Israel. But I just don't know. Um, I don't know that they're making the right decision there. I would advise a coaching change if they want to go to the Olympics. 
it's just from what I've seen over time, you know, like I, I'm not a bet, like if I was a betting person, I'd be like, oh, I'd feel better about that. I don't really know the politics of like Israel ice dance or Israel skating federation. Fun to watch. Listen. Yeah. If you ever saw Evgeny have three partners in one summer and they all did the same program, you didn't have lived. All right. You okay. should... <laughs> have you I've have... heard. I have heard about it. Have you ever seen like the timeline of his partners? There was like a there was a Twitter video <laughs> one <laughs> once upon a time and it didn't have them all in there. Cause some people came back that last summer before the election. Okay. Yeah. Like you, you haven't lived, all right? Like they are my favorite federation and they're huge personalities. And Galit's mom is my favorite personality of all of them. Like, I just, I love her. I can't, like, I can't not, all right? She's just, if I see her in the kiss and cry, we can only hope that she's there for Olga Makutina. Like she's <laughs> a star, <laughs> she's incredible. She's the person that introduced me to Tatiana Tarasova. All right. Like, remember when that iconic photo? We, yes. Remember when we took the picture? She didn't took she it. didn't she like curse you out like three weeks later? Um no. No, no, no. Um, we had a discussion over something that had happened. There was a boy that hit me twice um in a couple of days at the rink. We had a discussion about it. Okay. But there was no swearing. No. She's still, like not no. But <laughs> there was um it was like a sit down we had okay between two strong women yes yes and like you know what i like her more like I we, love, we love her opinions we love to see the articles in sports room <laughs> it was it was an incredible conversation i will remember it until the rest of my life <laughs> it'll be in, it'll be in the book it will be in the book yes yeah <laughs> like, i like her more and find her fascinating. And like, I just, I love everything about her. I can't like, I, like she's such a character to me now. I just, it, yeah. Also, okay, the Marie France picture when Gabby Papadakis went, oh. and we went out for drinks with the um, I Am coaches after everything that happened with Nikolai Sorensen. What was your take on that picture? Okay, so the first thing I honestly like, I was shocked for a minute, but then like, I think five minutes later, I was like, no, I'm not really shocked like about this anymore. Like I well, feel skating like is such a phony sport. Yes. Social media. A hundred percent. We knew exactly why that picture was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a hundred percent there to do damage control. Yeah. And I just didn't like Marie France's hair. So I felt like it wasn't going to be a good season for her. I mean, I didn't study the photo that much to like identify like how the hair was, but. The hair wasn't great. It wasn't like where maybe she needs to get her hair done before the Grand Prix to feel she better. Does. She got rid of her highlights before last season. Does she still have the really short haircut? It's really short again. Okay. She looks better with a little bit longer hair. And my, my I agree. You know, like she loses some of her magical powers. I, yeah. And we but, need to be like. But maybe we cut it because we're going to grow it out super long before the um, the Olympic season. Also, do you, you want to see a Terry like intermix with the I am coaches? Because, you know, she's not supposed to be seen with them. I mean, I feel like they're I feel like that's so like hypocritical of them, because like literally like if you look at what their school has done, I mean, I know they're not drugging the skaters, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's pretty comparable at this point with what we've seen over the past year and a half. Like, I don't think Marie France is like any better than a Terry Tupuritza right now. Okay. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay. Maybe not that far, but I'm saying they are pretty close right now in comparison. Mm. Not that close. Well, it's the Maybe song by like, Billie Eilish, Birds of a Feather, <laughs> we go together, right? I just... I wouldn't say, okay, maybe like, like 50, 90, would that be better? What do you, you mean think? 51, 49, is that what you're saying? Like, 50, what? Like she's like 30, 70, 30, 70, we'll do that. Okay. We'll do 30, That's 70. Like Oh my God, 3070. That's like when I first came out of the closet and like me and this other guy, we were like messaging each other and being like, I think I'm maybe 30% gay. And so <laughs> those, those like, you know, the, the number shifted. <laughs> like, yeah. 
Did you ever have that or no? Was that? No, not no. really. It was 2003. It was a thing. It was a thing. All right. The thing. <laughs> anyway. I can't believe I said that. It's, it's a real 30, story. 70 brought back a lot for you. It really did. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What did you think about the Budapest trophy? Okay. Did where you- do you want to start? Where do you want to start? This is oh, my- wait. I had so many realizations. One thing before we start the Budapest, I was very offended by the Ski Canada mental health posts this week. Oh, why? When they're posting like about mental, like, we respect, like, we love all of our skaters. Like, we respect their mental health. But then there's, they were, like, no statement about the sex, the Nikolai Sorensen, who... Of course. Why would no, we? No, no, no post about that. And they've been supporting him the whole time. And likely, you want to, I just want to make an observation. Likely that the victim of that, of the assault, of probably cured mental health issues from it. But then we're supporting the sexual assaulter, but then promoting mental health positivity. Like we're like, we're just. I don't know that they supported him as much as they ignored it. But I feel like ignoring it in this situation was kind of supporting him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Ignoring it was a big mistake. I think a statement would have been better. Uh, It seemed like as skating has become smaller the federations have uh more ill-equipped staffs and their strategy is to ignore it because skating isn't really in the news uh right now so i think that that's um not always the wisest decision because i don't i think it comes around back on organization yeah personal opinion but um i okay so i had some like realizations right okay you know i was at the world figure and fancy skating championships right we heard, we did hear. And you know, like in the fancy program, like there's no rules, right? Mm-hmm. And also like- In the, the figures, judges, there's no rules. But like also like when the judges evaluate stuff, there's no rules, right? Mm-hmm. And I was sitting next to Tommy Litz, who's a genius and an artist and the first man to do a triple toe and very eccentric, okay? I saw him put Liz Schmidt sixth in the fancy <laughs> program. <laughs> And I was like, this sport's not real. <laughs> okay. Like this, there's no way. There's no way. There's like this is not this is not real. Like that, that didn't just happen. And granted, not everybody liked her peppermint patty music. It was very loud in the arena and screechy. And I think she needed a wig. I think she needed to go like full drag, right? Like it, and we needed someone dressed as Snoopy. Mm-hmm. Which I think Karen Corlin would have done if she asked her. I'm sure she probably had the costume, but I yeah it was it was missing it okay she did not deserve to be sixth it just no. like i just it wasn't her best performance you know there was an issue on a double sow but sixth right like tommy you can't just like do what you want right like, whatever right i mean that's what they did in the figures you know he's just practicing what he knew oh my god so like, <laughs> that's how they judged He's very eccentric. He's an artist and a skater, okay? Mm-hmm. Love him dearly. Um, you know, a legend. First man to do a triple toe. He also put listen things in the fancy portion, okay? I, you know what? It's always interesting to sit there for that night. Um, I just, I, I had an issue with, like, what was that? But it's on the website. It's it's documented. Um, it happened. It lives forever. I didn't make it up. <laughs> okay, like and it just I was tired. We waited eighty minutes to start my competition, so I had all these realizations on like the way out. And what I realized when I got home and I was watching the Budapest Trophy is that all the U.S. girls are going to cheat their jumps. Brady cheats them. Lisa cheats them. Lindsay cheats them. Right. Mm-hmm. With this IJS, what's the difference in Brady skating and Lindsay's, right? I mean, Lindsay's got better spins, Brady's got better speed, right? Alyssa Lou's got the best backstory and the best music to Donna Summer. So good. I think she cheats her jumps like maybe the most because she cheats on the way up and down. Mm-hmm. But Lindsay's got some humdingers. So, um, 
I, but you know what? And then also Alyssa has that music that's like, it's better to be something than nothing without you. You know, people are going to make that about her comeback and they're going to say it's about skating, not about a relationship. So, and they're going to love the comeback narrative and feel emotional. I'm voting for her because she's got the best story. She's, she's going to Worlds, to the Olympics. We are sending her. Those Listen. jumps are going to be called clean. They're nationals months. clean, right? Mm -hmm. Lori Parker, if she's judging, positive GOE. Right? Yeah, plus three. Okay, this is what I think Lori's going to do. She's going to put her first in the short. You got to give her some room because they do more jumps in the free. In the free, yeah. So We're going to give her like a lot of room in the short. Yeah. I think Lori's going to get it done. And you know yes. what? I think for Lori that because I think it's the right decision. I think she could get- She's correct. She can at least get a couple of articles about like making a comeback and like all of her teen angst. People would love mm. that shit. You I think it's going to happen. I think What was honestly, your teen angst moment? Like what was your teen angst like? I don't know. I was like pretty, I'm pretty normal. I'm a normal person. No, like, I'm not like an angsty. I'm not like an angsty. My day, people listen to Evanescence. They were listening to Lincoln Park. They had live journals. They were on maybe like journals. in like, middle school. Like I was like, like one pilot sky. Like, no, you ever no, no. All right. Alyssa <laughs> Lou was like at Hot Topic. Like I feel yeah. like we watch Mahal and I feel like she her. goes like every day. No, like, I think we watched Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Mulholland Drive. Like, we hung out in my friend's basement. Like, I just, like, I feel this in her. Like, okay. She, she could have been in the stage crew or, like, in the theater, right? And I think that she's going to give a good interview. She gave a good, I thought that the Phil Hirsch article was great. He was, they were saying so many things about Arthur Liu without saying them. Like, the coach is like, Alyssa's the boss now. And <laughs> Phil Hirsch, he... first of all. My yeah. rapper for Phil Hirsch, he is the Bob Woodward of skating, right? Mm -hmm. Like he is just like a legend and salty and shady in the best way. Like he could slay you. <laughs> unapologetic, unapologetic. Like God love him, right? At the, he's he's in his like professor era. Mm -hmm. And I just, that article, there were like the way he wrote it, respect. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> he said the thing about, like there were certain lines in there where he was like, you know, Arthur Lou had previously fired Massimo Scali right before. And then it was, uh, he was like, Alyssa's now the boss. And <laughs> it was great, okay? We're all gonna read all into it. She's skating for herself. She, listen, that short program with that music, that's her Gracie Gold program to the waitress. She Absolutely. Skating, right? And we learned that she went to base camp of Mount Everest like this is a girl that is so interesting yes like, you don't just you don't just do that no if you're like a normal person I mean I totally want to do it but like she did that and she's making this comeback happen all right like if you can do that she's making that Olympic team yeah like Brady needs to up her game all of them need to up their game they need to get better backstories or like let them out <laughs> it's yeah. the key like Deanna can't just be the 40 year old girl who went to Worlds anymore, right? Like she needs to talk about her real backstory about like what happened when she quit skating, when her father passed away in the plane crash. Like we need to know more about Deanna's life. It mm -hmm. needs to be, we need to get like the full origin story of that diva. Like she's used up the I'm a 40 year old world champion card. And you know what? Those Germans don't have a backstory. No, so, I think we can do it. We can we can give the cover story like next summer. I think yeah. that's what we're doing. We 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 coast this year. We give the cover story next summer. Right. She needs to do like a good interview. There needs to be tears, and she's shown that she can cry on a CBC interview. She could Bring call Phil Hirsch. Call him up. He would love her. He would do it. He once messaged her on Twitter to be like, "Hey, Deanna, how are you? How was Ashley Kane's concussion?" <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, she was American then, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was using his sources, okay? That's what a journalist does. He's a smart guy, all right? Listen, I love him, all right? I, okay. Rico and Ricci, if they don't skate to love story, they're not interesting enough for me. Like, I don't care that they're dating. 
they're dating. Yeah. No, but, you know that. Yeah, Bruno, they yeah. should do Love Story next year. It would be so Canadian, right? Yeah. The Bruno Mercado of it all. Mm -hmm. I would love it. Like, if they don't give us that, they're just like the nice Japanese team. I feel like they could totally still bring back the woman program for one more year. You know what? Like, yeah. I know we've done like, it seven 7,000 years, but like, there's just a vibe to it that just works so well for them. Do you like them more after she was salty in the kiss and cry? Like that made them way more interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we knew that they, um, they were interesting though. They just not really like outwardly shown it or showed it at um any competitions, but I, I really appreciated it. Yes. What did you think? Of, did you like Alyssa Lou's? You're on the Donna Summer train. Have I? I'm sold on the Donna Summer train. I downloaded the song on Spotify. Like I'm on the Donna Summer train. Of like, course. what is your favorite part of the song? Because like, it's, it's at the end. It's at the end. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm a Donna fan. Okay? Yeah. You know, I wanted Olivia Smart to skate to Donna last year. She didn't listen to. She didn't listen to us. I wanted her to skate. To this time, I know it's for real. And then maybe a little, I actually, I thought maybe we could start with MacArthur Park and then go into this time. I know it's real because like the one relationship will be ending and then the next one will be starting. Like it's poetic. You get it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I got yes. it. I got yeah. it. Like I thought Olivia could have done it. This boy is just not it. And these Dune programs, it's like, there's it's a an epidemic this year. I'm not, there's too many. There's only one that's good. And that's about it. There was this ice dance team that I skated with and the boy likes video games and they're like skating to Final Fantasy or something. It's like, no. Or League of Legends, right? <laughs> Such yeah. great. <sighs> um, that's how I feel about the Doom program. <laughs> like, and you'll you see another one this week. Yes. I, I, right, I'm excited to see Adam C.O. him. But did you see that program where he was like trying a backflip with a half twist? And I did. It's a little crazy, but I feel like that's on brand for him. Like you would try something like that. It just seems like all the wrong way, like all the wrong direction skating is going in, right? Like, oh, now we're going to do backflips with twists on the ice. Yeah. Very Ari Zakari. That is very gymnastics on ice. Very gymnastics on ice. Like a, like Ilya Malinin is going to be doing like a backflip with a full twist. He'll be doing like. What like Yurchenko like on the ice like Simone Biles will come give him a, a lesson. He'll be doing the Biles too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That would that would be on brand, right, for where the sport is going. Um. Yeah. What did you make of Lindsay's program? Okay, the short is the same as last year. I think we got very generous calls. Would you the three? I, I see the concept. I really don't know if I'm a fan of it, but I really liked the dress. But there was a lot of moments where I think she's just, she's not fluid enough to kind of emphasize the movements that Sandra was giving her. She, I don't the dress think she, is great. The dress is great. I think she needs to give it more and she needs to spend yeah. time with them because she goes in and out, right? Like she will be doing the choreography and then you could tell she's focusing on the jump and then she's trying to give the choreography and I think it's hard for her to get out of her shell. Yeah. Uh, so I think the more comfortable she is and I don't know being at Hackensack with the screaming Russians is like the way to feel more comfortable. <laughs> like I just, I just, I don't think it makes somebody open up emotionally, right? Like the, it's just like not that environment. So I think she needs to spend more time with Sandra and David so that we can get the performance out of her because when I was watching her I was like, okay, we're not going to get the jumps clean. Like, that's just no. not going to happen. So we're going to have to go, like, all GOE and second mark. I think the same thing can be argued with um, Alyssa right now, too, in the MacArthur Park. She's doing in it. The, She's in the, the free. Right? In, sorry, in, the, in the steps. It's almost there. It's, like, almost 100%. I would say it's, like, at 70% right now. She's not fully, fully into committing to that steps yet, which I think she'll get there at the end but it they're both i think both of them are just just under committed just a little bit and i think that that's okay because it's october we have a lot of time to really get into the program i think she needs to like really research donna and get into it yeah the short is really well choreographed with the steps and her flow. yeah very it's, beautiful yeah but like i'm seeing the vision i'm I ready see the vision for both 
listen, we can put those girls at nationals whatever way we like. We can Tommy let's this. Okay. Yeah. Music first place. All right. Yeah. She's reliable. She's going to go. I think the down. jumps will be cleaner as the season progresses. We get more repetitions on them. We just need her to be third overall at national. <laughs> that is so doable. I think With Lori can. Parker on the panel, anything's possible. And her cousins, right? Yes, Dana Grimm. And Peggy, okay? We can do this, right? Like, I think that we we have to put the right judges on the panel and okay. get it done. She would, I mean, there are some threats to her being a top three. It's not like a done deal, but like that Elise Lynn Gracie, you know, she's a Tammy skater. So I think we're going to have to see like potential money and publicity for US figure skating. And then yeah. that is, we'll go Amber, Isabeau, and Alyssa. I was talking to someone this week. I think what the ideal world team, the US wants, I think they want Amber, yes. Isabeau, Alyssa yeah. for That's Worlds. What I just said. Yes. Oh, did you say that? I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> And then they'll send the two girls to Junior World. Sorry, I'm, I must have done so that. We can send at least the four continents, right? She can get that. Yeah, seat. Brady and Lindsay can go to four continents, and then Sarah or Elise can take the last spot. Yeah, like we shouldn't send Isabel to four continents. She no, doesn't she doesn't need to go. She was there, so I don't think that we should send her. <laughs> She's fine. We don't need the points. You don't need to go. Like uh, no one wants to go. Um, no. Yeah. It, the rest of it. What did you make of the Ice Dance team, Emily Braddy and Ian Somerville? I'm ready to put him with Isabella Flores. Like I agree. I really do. I really like um I really like their skating overall. I will say they're very, very strong skaters, the two of them. She's not as strong as he is, but I do think cohesively they're both very they're up there with the terms of strength of skating of the US dance teams. Um, you remember Emily and Ian? Yeah, Emily and Ian. I think she's kind of stiff when he's skating to Boney M and doing Daddy Cool. Like he's really into yeah. it. He's kind of there, right? Yeah, I'm saying she's not at his level, but I think out of if you're comparing her mm. to like other skaters in the US, other female skaters, ice dancers, she's definitely up there in terms of one of the better ones. Um I think they're good. I think it's very beige. Both programs very beige. I think the free is beige. I mean, is it the yeah. same program as last it's year? It's the same the program last as last year. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know if it was the same program or the same program to different music, which tells you. It's it's very issue. telling. Yeah. If we don't remember what their program was last year, right? It's the same free. It's not good. Um, yeah. And I think it just, it has to, it probably is due to the injury, you know, not being able to get a new program choreographed. So, and that already... can hurt them. I think that might hurt them in terms of moving up this year, because when you're doing the same, I feel like when you're do, you don't do the same program two years for dance. And that, that can help set you back. When he skated the solo performance at Champs Camp, and it felt like an audition, I was ready to put him with Isabel Flores then. Or yeah. look at the junior ranks to see who we could put him with. I, yeah, I, I just don't know that this is, gonna be a team that gets a repeat trip to it's worlds. not the home that run. she could get a repeat trip to worlds yeah um they just look mismatched to me in not just in terms like in terms of just like their skating personalities like i don't see a cohesion so yeah her but, lines are not not the best we could even try them with annabelle right i mean they're right there so Either one that's that's great too annabelle i feel like would be a great She's literally yeah. skating to Star Wars with Jeffrey. Yeah. Chan. Like we and could... they are, that's a rough program to watch. That's a rough program to watch. Yes. Yes. Um, I, yeah. I, you know what they did? The lightsabers is an exhibition. It was... yeah, they did. <laughs> so. They did. You know what? There used to be like weird on for us in skating. There's this video of Nancy Kerrigan from the Evening with Champions. She put on like a fun jacket. Like it was like black and gold sequin and danced to MC Hammer, which maybe was okay in 1993, but not okay now. Oh. And yeah, like people used to have these like fun encores. And, and that the lightsaber's up there with that level of cringe for me. Yeah. Um, But yeah, where are you going to put them at Skate America? You think they will be, you think 
Lisa and Alexa will beat them, or you they're going to beat. Them? Oh, I think NFL will beat. They're in America. All right, they're in America, Dave Lee's. Like that's that's got to like it's like a one place placement push. Okay. All right, all right. They're like an eighth or nine for me. Okay, you think I was going to go eleventh? Well, there's only ten, right? Wait, there's ten. Wait, one. Two. There's ten. Then they're ninth for me. They're ninth or eighth or ninth for me. I haven't done finalized it yet. I have. The I'm subs- waiting for the practices. They're the substitute host pick at Skate America. Like you get. They that. are, but they're the put. Po- I think they're the more pushed one. I think they honestly get more political push than Isabel Flores. I think they have more behind them. He's not in the competition now, so yeah. You know what? I think they wanted Rose off there. Competing. Oh, Annabelle could beat two teams. You think Olivia's going to be down in like eighth? Did you see their free dance at Nebelhorn? I know, but she got her hair done. I feel very good about her. All right, right. you feel. I'm just saying. It could happen. You're really pushing her down to eighth place. Annabelle's the engine that could this season. The, they they have. You know you what? Know, you know, you're right. You're like on. You know when the USFS scores. like starts on a train, like when they start getting behind someone with backing them, mm-hmm. like that score that Annabelle and Jeffrey got at their first event was was hot. It was a surprise, right? The the wheels are in motion. Like don't forget that her father is Nikolai. And then, like, her other coach is Charlie White. So those are two different political entities. I was saying she could be, like, eighth. That's yeah. good for her. I love that we have the nepotism Olympics at all time, right? Like her. I mean, Diana Davis is here, too. I know. This dance event is, like, kind That's of where what... it's at. Yes. hmm Yeah. Did you watch Kimmy Rapond this weekend? I did. I, I'm, like... Kind of obsessed with it like i love i i love her i like i i love her skating so much the lines i think her skating skills even with the flexed feet like yes it doesn't me, matter because to me the line is like cut i i think it's so beautiful like she did this climate change program like i feel like she kind of ended brady to with the climate change program like one upped her on it this weekend no no brady to <laughs> yelled like greta <laughs> right, right like i feel like kimmy gave us like the beautiful climate change program I mean, and it's not the ben it's not the benoit the, ben- the, the, the dress was gorgeous right like, i mean all of them are not the free the free dress isn't my favorite but the short was very beautiful yeah i'm not into the gladiator program the climate change i think it's program. yeah it's yeah. not as great but it's not bad you know what i like is that she did a climate change program like the same weekend as a horrible hurricane so like that's i know she's I'm... aware she's a self-aware girl i know <sighs> i mean <laughs> you know what but like the theme has been done before yeah it's been done by like everyone didn't that like, brother and sister team, like from Finland, didn't they? I think they did it, but then yeah. la- didn't last year they do like a call to like their dad or like mm-hmm. a letter to their father? Like, I don't. But is Kimmy's like climate change program like better than Deanna's ocean program? Deanna needs to add some color. Can I be so back, real? Glory? Yeah. Yes. Deanna Stilato's ocean program. I love her. It's a little bit of a miss, but I love the like little wave part, the little choreographic wave part in the middle. Like that was good. But Deanna is not doing climate change. Like she's like a wave and like he's a surfer or something riding the wave. Like I don't remember what it was. Yes. Yes. But you can't text Deanna Stellato telling her that I don't like her program this time. All right. Like we can't have Deanna like <laughs> hating me again. You know, if she watches it, she watches it. But yeah. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I I was defending her this weekend. So I yeah. met a judge who gave her a 625 at one of her first competitions. Unacceptable. Before. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, like, it's fine. I, they didn't know. They didn't know what they had in front of them. So. Sorry. They obviously had not paid, paid attention to the 2001 Carrie Lotion Classic. All right. What was your moment of the week? Um... 
honestly, it was probably Kimmy Rapond. Kimmy Rapond and the Gia Shin interview that came out. So what did Gia tell us? Nothing much. It was just like a very generic interview. She said that she's focusing a lot of stro uh, a lot of time on stroking in Canada. So not on that triple Lutz. Not on that triple Lutz, which is very con concerning for me. All right, I think my my moment of the week was that Phil Hirsch, Alyssa Liu article. Like I saw the vision for her yes. world in the Olympics. Now, like I was on brand. Like she's I, in. I thought she gave us like just enough about her personal life and just enough about her personality that I'm like, I'm in. I'm on board with this girl. Yes, a hundred percent. We've got some feistiness. We've got some like intrigue. She's climbing on like the Mount Everest base camp. She's traveling. She's she's doing it all for us this weekend. Listen. And did you see the Instagram, like the the dress post that she's been right. doing too with Lisa? Like, if she could kneel during the national anthem, it would oh. like put her over the top for me. All right, like. If she could endorse, oh my goodness! Like I just, I see the vision. <laughs> like I do. Okay. Think about like what she could do on social media. Like okay, Amber's been getting like a free pass with that pride flag for too long. I think Alyssa could give us like shaved head under the ponytail. You okay. <laughs> like, I think Alyssa is the real deal. Like, Amber's going to have to really up her game. Like, all we know about Amber is that she, like, plays Dungeons and Dragons and she holds the pride flag. Mm -hmm. Alyssa Liu, she's interesting. Alyssa Liu went to Mount Everest, all right? She did. And, like, we also know that, like, her father, like... Picked the wrong egg. No, like, picked designer eggs. She has yeah. trouble with his siblings. Like, he fired a million coaches. Like... That's a Nicole Bobek level of intrigue that, like, I'm here for. Like, I mean, she's Lou, kind of had as many coaches as Nicole Bobek, too. Art Lou, Aunt Joyce, Yana Bobek. Like, these are legends, okay? Alyssa is no one to, like, sleep on. Like, is she... Alyssa or, like, our Nicole Bobek? No, no. She's, okay. she's, she's driven like Nicole. She's driven more, more organized than Nicole. Nicole more giving the Donna Nicole. Summer program that 30% more that you want. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yes. Well, did I just yeah. say everyone? <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>